In this question, we have two blocks moving in opposite directions. Let's find what the question is asking for. We will use both walls as our datums. Then we can write our position coordinates. We also need a point between the pulley and the motor C to represent the movement of the cable when the motor is spinning. Now, for the right side, we have SA and SC. For the left side, we have SB. Let's write an equation to represent the right side cable. We have SA plus SA minus SC is equal to length 1. Taking the derivative gives us the velocity. Taking the derivative once more gives us the acceleration. We need that since the question gives us values with respect to the acceleration. Simplifying gives us 2AA is equal to AC. Well, AC is given to us in the question, which is 3T squared. Negative in our case, since we chose a position coordinate facing left to be positive, and the motor pulls the cable right. That means AA is negative 1.5T squared, or 1.5T squared to the right. Now that we have the acceleration of A, we can take the integral to get the velocity, which is 0.5T cubed. Taking the integral once more gives us the displacement equation, which is 0.125t to the power of 4. All this means is that the block is moving a certain distance with respect to time, and it's represented by the equation we just found. Let's focus on the left side now. Since we're given the acceleration of the motor D, and since it's just a single cable, the same acceleration is applied to block B. So taking the first integral gives us velocity, and taking the second integral gives us a displacement equation. Now we can find the time it takes for d to equal zero. Or in other words, for both blocks to travel in opposite directions to create a gap of three meters from their initial location. So we can represent that with an equation like this. Plug in everything we just found and solve for t. Again, this t value we just found represents the time for both blocks to travel a total distance of three meters apart from each other. Part b asks us to find the velocities of each of the blocks a and b when this occurs. We just need to plug the time value into the velocity equations we found earlier. Plugging them in and solving gives us the velocity of each of the blocks. Thanks so much for watching and I hope this helped. Best of luck with your studies.